we're huge fans of Star Wars, and we we part of I think Peter Langston, who hired a bunch of us, was not looking for technical brilliance as much as for people who could pu pull a lot of different pieces together. Um, you know, people who could tell stories and, and cared about the attention to, de to detail um, and the story. And I mean, there, there wasn't a whole lot you could do technically back then anyway. And maybe because also we didn't have, like I said before, we didn't have the crutch to go back on of doing a Star Wars game. Um, you know, maybe if you do a game on a, on a subject where you're guaranteed it's probably going to sell a huge number of, of games just because it's tied into a, a huge license, you don't have to try as hard as, as being inventive. Um, that's a guess. I'm not sure, though. Um, a lot of the people who were, I thought were really creative, left the company after a period of time to go either to start their own companies or, or do other things. So maybe they weren't looking for people that were as innovative. But you know, I think you know, Tim Schafer um, did some amazing stuff. I actually hired him, so I can take some partial credit for that when we were looking for new people to do scum games. Um, but most of these people just left the company to go off and do their own things. And maybe they were just hiring people who could do games that weren't looking for quality. I don't know. Anyone have a theory? You know, we didn't have, we couldn't fall back on Flash and Glitter. So we had to come up with a new story. Gameplay. Um, yes? What's your favorite LucasArts game? Well, question, what's my favorite LucasArts game? Um, well, of the ones I showed you, Zach, um, that's easy. Um, it was the, for me personally, it was you know, my favorite just because it was closest to my heart and my interests. Probably most represents my sense of humor and my, you know, what I, I want to do. And it, um, it's probably had the most freedom with that game. I didn't, I wasn't tied to a license. I, I didn't have anyone else telling me how to be creative in that game. So it was very close. Um, I love the Monkey Island games. Um, especially the first couple ones. Um, and I haven't played a whole lot of games after around probably the early 90s, maybe 94, 95, so I'm not sure about the current ones. Um, yeah, you at the corner there? Right. Yeah, Ruth and Beard, yeah, right. Right. OK, question is, were there ever any plans to do a 16-bit version of the Rescue on Fractal, or Fractal engine? Um, since it was impressive in 8 bits, why not in 16? And I think, let me think about that. Uh, I think there were a couple of times when it came up, they wouldn't have gone back to redo Rescue, though. Um, I think there were actual versions of Ballblazer that came out on different platforms um, with, with more, adva you know, more advanced graphics and different gameplay. But they weren't done by the original people. Um, so I guess the answer is no. Part of it might have been because the, the knowledge to do it left when um, Pixar left and when Charlie Counter left. So Charlie learned the code that, Ron, that Lauren created, and he was probably the last person that could have, been, could have done it. So that might have been a, a you know, it, it would be better it, after after that. I guess people just went with um, straight polygon generation that you're using now for games. Any other questions? Um, how about way in the back? Um, okay. The question was. Oh, the statement first was that LucasArts recently canceled, well, I know they canceled Sam and Max 2 and Full Throttle 2. Those are the two you're talking about. The graphic adventures and how do I feel about that? Because they stated there was no market for it. Um, well, I'm disappointed, um, obviously. And, and everyone I've talked to who likes graphic adventure games is disappoint hugely disappointed. Um, I had the opportunity to talk to the marketing person who I'm sure was involved in the decision. And I, it sounds like it was um, mostly an economics issue. Um, back when we did Zach, um, cost us $150,000 to produce. 
took us about nine months, eight, eight or nine months to create the game. Um, and of course, nowadays, games are in the 10, 20, 30 million dollar range, take two, three, or four years to produce. And as the games advance, people, you know, they, each one had to be more movie like. So the, the cutscenes became much more elaborate, the animation was much more elaborate, the production values much more expensive. Um, we had a team of maybe five people working on Zach, um, two, two full time scripters, maybe two artists, and someone part time working on the engine. Um, and current games could have you know, 40 to 60 or 70 people on them. So they're like film productions. So if, if they can't make their money back um, and they can't be assured of making their money back, they, they don't want to spend it on a game where there's not guarantees. So I think it's basically an economic issue. Um, and things get worse when, when you're working on platforms like Xbox or you know, PS2, where you have to pay something like 10 bucks um, per game to to the manufacturer, to, to Microsoft or Sony, just to issue a game. So cost of goods goes way up over PC games. And um, so it's money. Now, if, if someone could convince them that um, the graphics weren't all that important and that a game with, with a story that could be done in six months for maybe a million dollar budget instead of you know, 10 million or 20 million, we could still sell, then, then maybe they do it. And I don't know how you convince them other than maybe some of the, if one of the fan games that, that were being produced actually took off, or if some company that could, could pull something like that together had a game which was enormously successful, then everyone, all the big publishers will copy that and start doing things just like that. You know, look at Myst um, as, as a last example of something that sold, you know, what, two or three million copies and it started a whole wave of a, of a new type of game. Um, even though, though none, of the, none of the ones that were made afterwards did anywhere as well, um, publishers just like, you know, same thing with films. You see a film that's successful, you see soon after you see three or four films or copycats. So just done marketing. Next question. What do I do now? Okay. The question was, why did, I, why did I leave Lucasfilm Games and what do I do now? Um, well, in 1989, after I finished Indy, um, I spent a year 